Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Bible study of the book of James. Uh, we're studying about James gives instruction on the evil power of the tongue. Uh, James 3 and 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Now that's about as strong as you can get it. And we're going to look at each one of these statements. He said the tongue is fire. Now that Greek word for tongue is glossa. And he said the tongue is a fire. What that means is the tongue is as destructive as fire is. That's how we ought to view our words. They are destructive as fire. Now he said, uh, so is the tongue among our members. Now the King James says, so is the tongue among our members. Literally it's so is the tongue set among members. We have hands, we have feet, we have eyes and ears. We have a lot of members to our body. The tongue is just one of them. But the tongue is set among members in such a way. And what it does is it, that it leaves the tongue to being the most powerful. More powerful than our arms or thighs, shoulders, leg, uh, legs. More powerful than whatever. More powerful than anything else is our tongue. A person can be little in stature, but yet their words can make them as if they're 10 feet tall. The point is this. The tongue is the most powerful member of the body. And the reason why the tongue is the most powerful member of the body is because the tongue expresses what's in her heart. Now he said here, the tongue is a world of iniquity. What that means is a vast universe of unrighteousness. That's a strong statement. James said our tongue, our words, have destructive power in it, and it defiles the whole body. The word defile, that speaks of a stain or to soil a garment, like a stain on us. The tongue, if it is used improperly, Wrong words, whether you think you're right or wrong, whatever inappropriate words spoken out of season, then there is like a stain on our body. Again, it defiles the whole body, he said. That means our words affect every aspect of our life. Even our spiritual life, our words affect everything. That's how powerful our words are. And so again, Solomon said in Proverbs 10 and 19, so we need to be careful. Be careful with our words. He said in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. God gave us two ears, but he gave us one tongue, right? Uh, right there it shows us that it's more important to be a listener than a speaker. Not that we're not to speak, but you follow what I'm saying. We don't always have to control the conversation. And we don't always have to get our two cents in. Get that? We all have to be careful about getting our two cents in. Amen? Then James said in this verse, And setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Now he's using somewhat a figure of speech here in the terminology that he's using. But he said it sets on fire the course of nature. That word course of nature, literally it means the wheels of Genesis. Or figuratively it means the course of one's existence. Again it stirs the whole direction of our life, our words. And then he says, it sets on fire of hell. That word hell in the Greek is Guyana. 
which literally uh, is the place of torment, the home of tormenting spirits. It's a common Greek word for hell. Hades is another one. Taurus is another one. But James, I think he goes as far as he can in, descri in describing how destructive and how evil our tongue can be. And remember, he's talking to believers. He's not talking to unsaved people. Over and over again, he would say, my brethren in this passage, really what he was saying or getting at was that there is hell in our heart. It's a pretty strong, straight, a pretty strong statement. But, he, but when he said, set on fire of hell, he's talking about the heart. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Now this is not just speaking of an unsaved heart, but he's speaking about a saved person's heart, about our heart. Because of the fall, because of man's sin, we have hell in our heart. But I'm so thankful for what Jesus did at Calvary. Because through what Jesus did at the cross, with that hell that's in our heart, it doesn't have to reign over us. Get that? It doesn't have to reign over us. Hallelujah. But we can reign over it through the power of the Holy Spirit through what Jesus did at Calvary. That hell doesn't have to reign and that hell in our heart doesn't have to dictate our words so the course of our life is directed in a way that's ungodly and unchristlike. But we can actually have victory over the hell that's in our heart. Amen? Like that old song uh, says, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. So that's why it's so important to keep looking to Jesus, to keep trusting in Jesus, to, can, to continue to abide in the vine, to continue to keep the old man put off and the new man put on to keep looking into the perfect law of liberty, to keep looking to Jesus. Amen? So again, Solomon said, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. And that concludes my lesson on James 3 and 6. God bless.